Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Rob here from Southwest Florida Television. Here I am once again, down at the very south end of Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park in North Naples, Florida. And really, really smell the red tide in the air this morning. It was really strong just a few minutes ago. Take a look south down Vanderbilt Beach. Still see we have all our dead fish lined up on the beach here. Sad, sad sight to see all these fish killed by the red algae. About 15 minutes ago, there were some incredible colors in the sky. Now they're starting to fade. Had some gorgeous pinks and orange and yellows this morning. Now they're slowly starting to fade out. Looking at a high of 92 today. Not very pleasant up here in North Naples. See that water still got that murky brown color. I see dead fish floating out there in the water still. So sad. What's amazing is the difference between North Naples and down. You go south of Doctor's Pass and the water starts changing color. It's just amazing. The further north you go, the worse it gets. Right now they're saying the red tide is at a moderate, low to moderate level from here south. Actually moderate to low if you want it said correctly. And then up in Fort Myers, it's, well, in Lee County, it's high. It's terrible. Definitely, you can see our warning flags over there. I don't know if you can see the colors on them. They're still flying. We got the purple flag for the red tide. Purple means there's dangerous marine life, and that right now means the red algae, that purple flag. Still got a little color up there. <laughs> Boy, it sure does stink. Lots of little eels on the beach still. Little dead eels. I've seen quite a few little puffer fish still washed up on the beach here. Haven't seen any sea turtle tracks yet, any new signs of any new crawls down here at the south end yet make our way north and if we're lucky maybe we'll have a couple new nests on the beach I just feel so bad for these little sea turtle hatchlings oh there's a dead puffer fish right there
Doesn't look like much has been done in the way of cleanup here. It's kind of a never ending battle. Every time you clean up the dead fish, more just wash up on the beach. Sure, the state park here would appreciate any volunteers who want to help clean this mess up. According to Wink News last night, there's a good chance this red tide might be sticking around through the weekend. Let's hope that's not the case. Vanderbilt Beach looking to the south here. That's where all the condos start. You can see where the condos end is where Del Norwegian's Pass State Park begins. About a mile of beach here, about a mile of beach. We have lost a lot of beach here too over the past several months. Walk up to area four, see if our friend Roy is here, see how he's doing today. Roy is an interesting character. 93 years old. He goes swimming just about every day. He's been swimming in this water for the past couple weeks. He's still with us. His skin hasn't fallen off. It doesn't look very inviting, the water. That's for sure. But our good friend Roy is proof that the red tide isn't going to kill you. The green algae, he wouldn't catch me near that. Every beach walk, I am I walk out into the water. It doesn't scare me. All you have to do is make sure you rinse off, shower off. I definitely wouldn't want to ingest any of that water. I wouldn't be putting my face in it. There are still dead fish floating around out there. You can see one right there in the center of the screen. Not a lot. There's pockets, oh my gosh. There's where you, offshore, you've been seeing the videos coming in from some of our boaters. I mean, it's just a, a sea, a sea of dead fish out in the Gulf. And then in some of the canals, oh my Lord, all the fish that have washed into the canals. Heartbreaking. Then of course, Besides the fish, we've been seeing images of dead dolphins and manatees and sea turtles. It's heartbreaking to see all this devastation.
signs of any new nests. New sea turtle nest yet this morning. The other day, when I was here, Tuesday, for my beach walk, this was our most recent nest right here, number 59. Sea turtle nest number 59. Do we have a 60? I don't know. We'll take a walk up the beach and see. 59 successful crawls. How many of these nests will hatch? Who knows? But this is a record breaker for Del Norwegans. 59 nests, that's the most we've ever had in one nesting season. Pretty amazing. It's getting very late in the nesting season now. Just stragglers coming up on the beach, late bloomers, if any. As far as the crawls and the nests go, we've had a good season. We have lost several nests because of our high tides. And hopefully the little hatchlings can survive the red tide. Probably doubtful. Positive note, one good, one good thing that's happened here is we don't see any barges, any dredging barges or pipes out there in the water. Finally gone. The dredging operation has moved on. beautiful out here. It's just a shame we have this red tide. Absolute shame. You can see how discolored the water is. Definitely not that inviting emerald green water that we're so used to seeing out in the Gulf. Stop here by one of these sea turtle nests. Just want to show you. It's always the higher up in the dunes they lay their eggs, the better. You know, this, this nest here could even get, get covered by high water here. We have tides that come all the way up to the dunes. But the further up one of these females can come, the better. You can see this one here, nest 25. She came up pretty high up into the dunes. 
And then if you look back, look at that nest. Look how high up she came, 58. That's nest number 58. She's way up in, almost into the picnic area. That's a good place for a nest to be. And it's a straight shot still for the little hatchlings to come right out to the beach. They don't have to navigate around anything. They got a clear shot to the beach. So as long as the raccoons don't get into that nest, that's a good one there, number 58. And that's probably, oh, maybe five weeks away from hatching. So hopefully his red tide will be gone by then. And up ahead of me, there's a row of nests and they're about halfway up the beach at our normal high tide. But we have had high tides that have submerged these nests up ahead of me. So the future for these little things, these nests to hatch is kind of bleak. They were underwater. It's always sad to see, but there's a reason sea turtles lay so many eggs. It's because of things like this. That definitely was underwater for a while. Same with these nests up here. They say one in a thousand of these sea turtles make it to come back and nest. What's neat is they come back to the beach where they were born to lay their eggs. So that's kind of cool. All these nests that we see, the turtles are from this beach. They were born here at Del Nor Wiggins. That's kind of cool. Oh. Dead horseshoe crabs. <coughs> Boy, it stinks here. It really does stink. These are all dead little puffer fish down here. A lot of a lot of the fish are puffer. Sheep's head over there, sheep head, some eels. You see a couple eels over here. Oh, it's terrible. When is this red tide going to go away? Man, that is the million dollar question right there. Very, very careful walking on the beach. You don't want to step on any of these dead fish. Especially the catfish. They have a toxin in their, their fins, their back fin that can infect you pretty bad. Yeah, there's a big dead drum. That's a good sized fish there. That's probably, oh, that fish is probably 20 inches there. Drum, dead drum.
see our nests up there up in up on the beach again 59 nests unless we discover a new one this morning 59 sea turtle nests darn it another dead horseshoe crab hard to imagine how many fish are in the sea when you see all these dead fish on the beach it's just amazing to think how many fish there actually are in the sea here's another dead eel Lots of new erosion up here. This is Area 3 Beach. Lots of new erosion. I swear this was because that barge was, anchored, was tied up just offshore here. I'm sure that had something to do with this erosion that changed the way the waves were hitting the beach. You can see it there. That little ledge there, it's all been washed out. Well, thankfully, we haven't seen any, any dead turtles this walk. That's a good sign. That was probably my most heartbreaking moment during my beach walks was finding that, seeing that dead Kemp's Ridley sea turtle on the beach. We did have one, a loggerhead washed up here earlier this week up at the pass a big 300 pound female loggerhead sea turtle washed up dead because of the red tide up at Wiggins Pass that was sad and on Tuesday we saw another one on the beach pretty decomposed it had been floating around in the Gulf for quite a while it was really hard to tell it was a sea turtle Still a sad sight. Well, I don't think we've got any new nests on the beach. I think we're about done with our sea turtle crawls. Park rangers making their rounds, checking the status of the nest, seeing if there's any any hatchings. Also checking the beach for anything unusual besides the dead fish. More dead horseshoe crabs over here. A little baby one down there next to that piece of wood, that old tree root. A bigger horseshoe crab down there in that mess. Hmm. 
Awful. Awful, awful, awful. The tide is on its way out here. Again, we're up in North Naples, North Naples, Florida. Low to moderate red algae warning here. To the north of us, it gets much worse. To the south of us, it gets much better. There's a big, big flock of pelicans flying by. Flying down to the south. In, down to into cleaner waters. I don't see our friend Roy here. Maybe he finally got sick and tired of the stench out here at the beach. More dead horseshoe crabs. Such a sad, sad sight. Oh, there's a sad, sad sight over there. Is it dead or is it alive just feasting on a, some dead fish? Ah, oh, sad. So sad, a beautiful little calico crab, leopard crab. How sad to see this guy dead. They're such gorgeous crabs, the calicos, also called the leopard crab. Ugh. So sad. This red tide has not spared anything. I'm kind of keeping my eyes open here for some shells while I'm walking along. Looking for a little bright spot here in the morning. Besides all these dead fish. Look at that bright orange scallop down there. Wow. Look how bright that is. Holy moly. Wow. That would have been beautiful if it was a whole shell. That would have been a nice little find.
<clears throat> Getting a nice little whiff of the red tide up here. Like a little snapper, a little dead snapper. Pretty much seen every species of fish we have here dead on the beach. I have not seen a shark on the beach. On this beach. Seen just about every other kind of fish here that we have in Southwest Florida, other than a shark. I don't know why. It always amazes me. I never the sharks. There's something about them. I don't know. Has anybody seen dead sharks? Picture of dead sharks, other than that big whale shark. I mean, we have so many sharks offshore here. Where are they when the red tide comes? That is all, that is probably 90% dead puffer fish piled up right there. All upside down on their backs with their white bellies sticking up. So sad to see those little puffers like that. Another horseshoe crab. It sure would be neat if we could find some way to get rid of that red algae. That blue-green algae, oh, that is the worst, the blue-green algae. It's up in the Caloosahatchee River, and pouring out into the Gulf by, up by Sanibel, oh, that is disgusting. That's where you're seeing the really bad pictures from. I'd love to find a really nice shell down here this morning. This one. <laughs> this one really nice sea shell this morning to break this morning up. Nice little piles of shells, but I'm not. Nothing's just jumping out at me and saying, pick me up, pick me up. A couple little, a couple little turkey wings, a little turkey wing and a bigger turkey wing shell. Those are always cool to look at. Those are really common shells too, the turkey wings. See a couple little moon shells. There's a broken one. Neat colors. Pretty chipped up though. See another one upside down there. What's that? Eh, that's in pretty good shape. What else do we have down here? amazing what you see when you just stop and take a little time spend a little time looking around all of a sudden you start seeing more and more things lots of there's quite a few turkey shells quite a few turkey wings here 
quite a few of them. Then there's a little olive shell here, kind of kind of worn out. Old olive shell. Kind of pitted. What else is down here? There's another piece of a moon shell. Just not much left of that one. A little old piece of a little lightning whelk, an old lightning whelk. See, it always pays to just stop. Stop and look around. Little worm tip. Yeah, a couple neat little shells there. I see, I saw something else I wanted to show you. Mm, I'll find a better one. I was looking for a nice big slipper shell. Yeah, there's a little baby olive shell down there. A little baby olive shell. You red tide stink ola stink aroma. Move on. I'm sure we'll find something else interesting up the beach. It's another little pile. Nice little pile here. Lots of little slipper shells in it. Wow. Slipper shells. I, I always love picking these up. There you can see the difference in the patterns on them, the shapes, the sizes. See how it looks like a little slipper when you turn it over? A slipper shell. A piece of the lightning whelk in there. Uh, poor little dead blue crab. Little baby. Little baby blue crab. What a shame. Killed by the red tide. Little baby Florida fighting conch shell. Piece of finger coral. on up. There's a few little piles of shells like this on the beach here. This is area four at Del Norwegans Pass State Park in North Naples. Still, still battling the red tide, unfortunately. Smells pretty bad out here. Water's pretty darn murky looking, pretty dirty looking. Very brown down to the south in area one. It gets a little lighter to the north here. That's a look south down the beach. You notice that barge is gone. That dredging operation has moved away. We've got our beach back. Now all we got to do is get the red tide out of here. That'll be happening soon. We've been battling red tide for as long as I can remember. A little jewel box shell, half of a jewel box shell. Scallop shell, pretty nice looking little scallop shell.
These are, this is called a mossy arc. A lot of times people get these mixed up with turkey wings. The mossy arc shell. I don't see any turkey wings right here. All right, show you the difference between the two. More coral down here, another piece of finger coral. Now let's move on to the next pile. There's, what's that, oh, piece of a, darn it, piece of an old tulip shell. Those tulip shells are gorgeous. It's just a piece of one. Oh, more death. Another dead hermit crab over here on the beach. Below it here. Piece of a big apple murex shell. An apple murex, piece of an apple murex. up the beach here. You can see the sun is just coming up over the trees, starting to light the beach up up here. It's beautiful out here right now, the weather. Just wish this darn red tide would get the heck out of here. more shells down here. Another big pile here on the beach. Lots of little worm tips in it. Lots of little worm shells. There's a piece of a worm shell, not the tip. That's actually a piece of the shell that would be attached to the tip. Cockle shell over here. A little cockle. A little scallop down there. There's, it's like a murex over here. Yeah. There's a lace murex shell. That's a nice murex. The lace murex. Kind of looks like a keyhole. Lace murex. You have apple murex shells here and lace murex shells. That's a lace murex. The apples are like a brown and white color. Another little, a little baby fighting conch shell. of a jewel box there. Boy, lots of little cockle shells out here. Lots of cockles. Lots and lots of little cockle shells. These are all cockles here. Lots of little cockle shells on the beach. Lots of oyster shells too. We got lots of oysters. All different size oyster shells. There's a little one. Well, I gotta stretch. Gotta stand up here. Stooped over. Hard on the back when you get old like me. You notice I'm not coughing, that's a good sign. Just 
Still dealing with the dead fish on the beach, though. There's not as many up here at the north end of the park as there were down at the south end. There's a big slipper shell here. That's a big slipper shell. Use your imagination. See how it looks like a little slipper? The slipper shell. Wow, it, oh darn it, it's got a hole in it. Big moon shell. Wow, look at that. Big moon shell, it's got a big hole in it. Still gonna keep that one, that's kinda cool. Big old moon shell. That'd make a nice shell to hang on a necklace there. It's got the hole right through it. Perfect. Big moon shell. And there you can see some of the dead fish still on the beach here. Rotting away. Slowly decomposing. see the birds pecking at them on the beach but they really don't eat the fish they pretty much just peg out their eyeballs <laughs> not just fish horseshoe crabs eels that's a big snook right there catfish for fish down there. Some sheep's head over here. A little mangrove snapper. Oh, another horseshoe crab. So, so sad seeing all these dead fish. And eels. A lot of dead eels on the beach, too. I did not see our old swim buddy Roy up here this morning. Boy, some, I'm seeing some nice, nice slipper shells on the beach this morning. Ooh, there's something interesting. What is, is that? A, I believe. Oh, it's got a big hole in the back. A scotch bonnet. I think that's a scotch bonnet. It's got a big hole in the back, though. Just slowly making my way north. We're up in North Naples, Florida. Still feeling the effects of red tide. Still dealing, still dealing with the dead fish. It's a piece of a nice big scallop shell. Oh, I forget what these are. Is this a nutmeg shell? Is that a nutmeg shell here? Who knows what that is? Is that a little nutmeg? We've actually been finding some pretty interesting shells this morning, despite the red tide. Not Definitely not having to fight any crowds out here. <laughs> Blasted beach is empty. Mother Nature is taking care of getting rid of people on the beach. <laughs> There's nobody out here. I am it. I am the lone soldier out here this morning. Wow, here's a beautiful, beautiful nautica shell. 
boy, that's a gem right there. Oh, come on, now we're getting a weak connection, so the image is gonna get fuzzy. Hopefully it'll come back here. Just stay with us as I move up the beach. Maybe the signal will get better. Beautiful nautica shell. Something though, I will post a link I will post this video in a little better quality on YouTube so you can watch it in a higher quality later. And I'll share the link on Facebook. So once you find my YouTube channel, you might want to follow that too, subscribe to that. Be sure you follow, like and follow Southwest Florida Television. like a piece of coral down here. Interesting piece of coral. Well, slowly making my way north. Again, I'm actually surprised that some of the shells we're finding. Cockle shell right there. Nice little cockle shell. The other day, Tuesday, whoa, <coughs> excuse me, just got a whiff of that red tide. Tuesday, we found some nice shells too. There were a lot of shells on the beach Tuesday. You can put up with the smell of the red tide and the dead fish. Who knows what you'll find out here. There's no competition, nobody else out here shelling. So if there's any treasures to be found out here, you stand a good chance in finding them. And you can see there's still dealing with the dead fish here. Still dead fish. Seashells and dead fish and dead eels. Boy, the shells are really spread out here on the beach. I don't see any big whelk shells. I'd love to find a nice big lightning whelk. Or a big pear well. Ah, it's just so sad seeing all these dead fish. Thank God we haven't seen anything other than a dead fish this morning. The fish are bad enough. Finding a sea turtle is even worse. Ugh, that's terrible seeing those poor sea turtles dead on our beaches. You can see all the dead fish strewn about there. pleasant shelling conditions, that's for sure. Another, another big dead horseshoe crab. Looks 
Looks like there's a little baby flounder. There's worms all over the place. You see all these worms crawling around? What the heck are those? They're everywhere. There's a little dead baby flounder. That's gross, isn't it? I don't know what the heck kind of crud that is. Sea maggots. <laughs> I don't know what they are. What the heck were those things? They are all over the beach here. Up in Area 4. I mean, the beach is just crawling with these little things. How disgusting. Are they maggots? Some kind of maggot? It would make total sense. quick trip out to the old sandbar here got some gulls out here seagulls brown pelican some royal terns you hear them squawking there Ooh, here's a nice big lace murex shell. Another, that's the second one I found this morning. A lace murex. That's a nice one. A nice little lace murex. It's a pretty good size murex right there for this beach. It's just kind of sitting right down here. Between the sandbar and the beach. A little water there, just a little water. And this murex was sitting in there. never know what you're going to find when you're going to find it or where you're going to find it but these things are just what the heck are these things they're all over the place what in the world are those Millions of them on the beach. Looks like the red tide has brought more disgusting stuff to our shores. Man, just can't win here. Thank God we're not seeing dead birds all over the place. That's probably gonna be next. Ugh. They're smart, they don't eat these dead fish. These are some sandpipers over here and some seagulls in the back and turns back there. A couple 
little brown pelicans. That's all right, this is your island this morning. This is your sandbar. I'm not gonna bother you guys. You got enough problems to deal with without having to deal with me. I do not see Roy here this morning. He must have some other other plans for today. He's usually sitting right up there under the trees. Darn it. I was looking forward to taking a swim with him this morning. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. To the beach here. I don't know if I'm going to make it up to Wiggins Pass this morning or not. I haven't been up there for oh several beach walks. There was some bad stuff up there. That's where we had a big loggerhead sea turtle washed up on the beach. Big old 300 pound loggerhead up on the beach. Wiggins Pass, killed by the red tide, another victim of the red tide. It's taking its toll on everything. Horseshoe crabs, fish. It's being relentless right now, that red tide. That's a horseshoe crab. I remember not too long ago it would always excite me when i'd find one of those horseshoe crabs alive up on the beach crawling around they were such interesting interesting animals now here they are dead all over the place looks like a nice little worm shell maybe down here yeah It's a nice little worm shell. Very cool worm shell. Walk out here in the water. There's a fighting conch shell down here. Nice little Florida fighting conch shell. Actually, quite a few of them down here. Oh, I can feel the skin melting off of my legs from this red tide. <laughs> Not. That's a nice shell there. Oh, can't see nothing here. Ugh. Looks like pea soup. <laughs> Just be sure to shower off here. That's all they you go to FWC's website. They tell you to make sure if you go in the water with red tide, when red tide is present, make sure you rinse off. Don't go in the water if you have any open sores or anything, obviously. You definitely don't get that water in your mouth. There's a big difference between the red tide and that blue-green algae. You can actually see the bottom here. Amazing. Amazing. Well, do I continue walking? Let's go up to Wiggins Pass, see if we can hold a signal here, a connection.
Same old story on the beach though. Dead fish. Dead fish, dead fish, dead fish. Rotting fish, dead rotting fish. Let's clarify that. But I have found a couple nice little pockets of seashells. We found some really cool shells already this morning. Ugh. There's dead fish buried in these. Just a little digging in these pockets of shells and found a couple nice little shells. A couple nice little moon shells, murex shells. There's a nice moon shell and a nice lace murex right there that we found earlier this morning. The lace murex to the left. It's a nautica shell actually on the right. Beautiful shells, nice little finds amidst the carnage. Little kitten's paws down here. Kitten paw shells, there's a little kitten paw. Kitten's paw, kitten paw. Those are kind of cool. All of our cat loving friends, a lot of them collect these out here on the beach. You can find them in all different sizes and colors. Neat little shells, the kitten paw. So, so sad seeing these dead animals, especially these dead horseshoe crabs. There's a dead horseshoe crab. There's a dead horseshoe crab over there. It's just so sad seeing them on the beach. And then this ugly, all this death and right here, look at this, right next to it. The beautiful little baby fighting conch shell. Gorgeous little specimen. Well, I've been noticing in the comments, there's been quite a few comments about red tide and the pollution. Everybody's injecting their own thoughts on what causes it. And, but I have not yet seen one of our local authorities jump into a conversation. They know I'm out here. It sure would be nice to hear from some of the so-called experts. I mean, you can spin this red tide and green algae any way you want and find documentation all over the internet to back up what you're saying one way or the other. but I would sure like to hear somebody that really knows what's going on explain it to us. And let us know if there's anything we can actually do about it. I mean, the red tide thing, I don't know. That's just like, I mean, I've grown, I grew up in Florida and I've seen this all my entire life, red tide. It was just always a big inconvenience. The other, this blue-green algae, that's definitely a serious problem, a pollution thing. And something has got to be done about it. I just saw a cool little old piece of an old shell down here somewhere. Where was it? Piece of an old crown conch. My favorite shells, the crown conchs. That's, this is an old worn out one. They're beautiful, the crown conchs. I get so excited when I find one of these on the beach in good shape. These, the tulip shells, oh, those are some of my favorites. Another dead horseshoe crab. Wow. Up, upside down on its back, and you can see its underside.
This is the front of it here. This is what would actually be coming if we walking this way. You can see its eyes there. Hooey stink Ola. Stink aroma. Yeah. Absolutely disgusting the smell here. In places, in areas. Whew. There's not much beach left ahead of me here. We've had some really, really serious beach erosion. We have lost all this up here. This beach used to go way out to here, and now it's gone. Just over the past several months, just because of some big storms we had. Wow. It's another big pile of shells down here. Bet you if you wanted to dig around here, there's something really, really nice down here. Looks like an old pear whelk right there, a piece of an old, old, old pear whelk. Nice little piece of finger coral. Beautiful, beautiful conch shell, the fighting conch. That's a beautiful shell right there. Another little pile of shells here. The shells, we've been finding these little pockets up on the beach this morning. We found some nice shells already this morning, believe it or not. Even with this red tide. There's a piece of a moon shell, darn it. I just saw this eye looking up at me. Is it a whole one? Nope. But you know what? This is another. I found one earlier like this. Kind of cool. It's got a hole through it be great for stringing on a necklace. I got two of these now this morning. The other one's a lot bigger than this one. These would make a great shell for a necklace. Of course, you can always drill a hole in it, but it's a lot neater when it's natural, when you just find it. Anything else buried down here? shelling. I mean, you can just stand in one place looking at a pile of shells and the more you stare, the more you're going to find. It's just amazing. But I don't want to, I want to watch my batteries here. I want to get up to Wiggins Pass. We have not been up there for a while. I want to check that out. I want to see what's up at Wiggins Pass. So let's walk north here. Through area five. Pretty sure we won't see any fishermen up here today. We still consider this a beach here. <laughs> Not much room to put a chair or umbrella. It's still part of our beach. The tide's on its way out. Big difference in the color of the water here between area one and area five where we're at now. Big difference in the color. Really, really brown and murky looking down in area one. Still 
not pretty here, but much better. I don't know if everybody watching is familiar with what's going on with our algaes that are attacking us here in Southwest Florida, our canals, our waterways, our beaches. We've got the red algae, the red tide attacking our beaches. The blue-green, the toxic blue-green algae that's been, it's caused by the filthy water being pumped out of Lake O, Lake Okeechobee. And that's definitely, that's definitely about money, folks. The Lake Okeechobee issue, that's all about money and greed. Always find toys on the beach. What do we got here? A little kid's shovel. You can always, always find. <coughs> Ooh, that's the red tide making me cough, sorry. Plenty of toys left behind on the beaches here. But yeah, everybody needs to just do their own research and come up with Draw your own conclusions on the red tide issue, the blue-green algae issue. Like I was saying earlier, I mean, there's a lot of people sharing their comments, you know, their thoughts and ideas. And whenever you want to make a comment, it's always nice if you can share a link. <laughs> Ooh, <coughs> stinky red tide, big whiff of that darn red tide. But if you can share a link to where you're getting your information, that helps everybody else. That helps educate everybody else. So if you're gonna make a strong comment about any of these issues, please share some sources for our friends here. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you can, like I said earlier, you can spin this any way you want. There's articles that are tailored to every side of the coin just like politics just like our news channels just watch the news channel that spins everything the way you want to hear it pretty simple <laughs> is that news probably not but what the heck you know education is the key educate yourself I'm still learning about it. By no means am I an expert or a marine biologist or scientist. Well, it's a good thing they have this no swimming sign up here. <laughs> right now, I don't think you have to worry about people swimming. But the reason this sign is here is this is fishing only from this point on on the beach. And that's because of, there's some pretty strong currents up north of us at Wiggins Pass, just around the corner up here. So from here up, this is where you would normally see fishermen out on the beach, no swimmers. And then behind me, all the way down that stretch of beach there, you can't see much beach here, but just around the corner, the beach picks up again. That's for swimming only. So once this red tide clears out, the fishermen will all be back in force here, I'm sure. When is the red tide gonna clear out? Who knows? One of our local meteorologists on Wink TV here. That's our CBS affiliate here in Southwest Florida. He was saying it's probably gonna be lingering here through the weekend. Hopefully, it will move on. As I said earlier, I've seen this red tide hundreds and hundreds of, well, hundreds of times at least in my lifetime. Is this red tide the worst it's ever been? 
I don't know. Does it get worse every time? I don't know. It affects, you know, different areas in different ways. You were up in Lee County here, and you were, if I was up doing a beach vlog in Lee County on the beach, you'd probably be throwing up at how many dead, how many dead fish there are on the beach. It's not nearly as bad down here in Naples as it is just to the north of us. It, there's another dead, another dead horseshoe crab. You know, comments like that, leave now, poison. Those are ridiculous. Yes, is it unpleasant? Yes. We're almost up to the north end of the park here. Now there's, <clears throat> we get out in the open. You can really smell that red tide up here. Just as I figured, thankfully there's nobody up here. Nobody up here fishing. Now this is where we had a A terrible occurrence last Monday, I believe it was Monday. This is where we found a park rangers. I didn't see it. I wasn't out here on Monday, but there was a 300 pound loggerhead sea turtle washed up on the beach here, dead from the red tide. Terrible to see those dead sea turtles. The odds are so stacked against them from the day they're born. One in a thousand of those sea turtles managed to come back and reproduce. And to see them kill, getting killed by the red tide is awful. Mother nature can be cruel at times. It's not our job to figure her out and mess with her. More dead, rotting fish. More dead, rotting fish. more about red tide and blue green algae definitely please please google there's lots and lots of facts out there lots of information about these two terrible things affecting our southwest florida waters now but under normal conditions we'd be out here and see quite a few fishermen out here this is where everybody hangs out and fishes and also this is where we would be seeing a lot of boats a lot of boat activity Well, that's what's left of a loggerhead sea turtle. That is on its back, slowly 
rotting away here on the beach. That's its head up there. That's its back flippers there. That's its underside. Horrible to see that. That's a dead loggerhead sea turtle. Slowly decomposing, killed by the red tide. It doesn't get much worse than that. The only thing that's worse that I would never want to see is a dead dolphin on the beach or a dead manatee, and we've had that. But that's what's left of a poor loggerhead turtle right there. Killed by the red tide. Poor thing. Sorry, that was just me taking a couple pictures. But again, that's what's left. Once was once a beautiful loggerhead sea turtle. The red tide is taking its toll again on another beautiful sea creature. back. I thought I might have lost the feed here. Ugh. Let's move on. Three hundred pounds is what they said that turtle weighed. Three hundred pounds. So, so sad. Oh. Horrible seeing stuff like that. When is this red tide gonna go away? That is the million dollar question right there. And what can we do to prevent red tide? What can be done? I don't have the answer for that one. And I don't think anybody does. Just seeing all the dead marine life out here is heartbreaking. Seeing one of our beautiful loggerhead sea turtles dead. That's terrible. Out here, floating in the water. A huge, I don't know, a tarpon or a drum. It's huge. A huge fish just floating out here dead. That fish is very, very, very large out there. Almost, I'd say 30 inches. I'm trying to zoom in, the camera's not letting me, but that's, I can't tell what it is. I'm not a fish expert. I don't know if that's a big snook, a tarpon, but it's huge just floating out there dead because of the red tide. Slowly drifting out as the tide goes out, slowly drifting out into the gulf. Sad, 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 sad images.
breaks my heart. I love the beach. I love Southwest Florida. I love Naples and it just kills me seeing our beaches like this. And I just pray to God that somebody is trying to do something about it. Somebody has the sense to do something about this. No, I have no clue what we can do about red tide, but this wicked, horrible green algae issue, that we can definitely fix for sure. And I hope to God somebody's working on that. And definitely, definitely big sugar is a big problem with that, definitely. If you go back years, don't just read current news, go back. This is, this is a dead loggerhead sea turtle we're looking at while I'm talking to you. This is, this is died from red tide, this loggerhead sea turtle. Well, this big sugar issue has been going on in Florida for decades. And there's a lot of good articles if you do some research about who they pay off. And it's not just Republicans. All you people out there saying it's Republicans, read. They funded Hillary Clinton. They funded Donald Trump. They give every politician money. So please do some research. Go back. Go back in time. Not just current current time, not just current days. Go back and research. Big sugar, how evil they are. But that is a dead loggerhead sea turtle laying on its back of a Wiggins Pass in North Naples, Florida. Sad. And that was, that turtle died from red tide, not this blue-green algae, which is connected to the Lake O releases. What do you say after seeing a sight like that, huh? Does it stir you up and make you mad? I hope so. Maybe one of these days we'll get a some political figure on here that has the courage to stand up and start commenting. It would be great to hear a real marine biologist Come on here and comment and tell everybody, let everybody know what's going on. Is that gonna happen? I don't know. Looks like a dead, a dead drum over here, drum fish. That's another pretty nice, pretty good sized fish there, probably about 16 inches. Just another example of the dead marine life. This, this red tide, I have not seen any species of fish, fish, a tough one, any species of fish spared. I've seen every, pretty much every type of fish we have in our waters here in Southwest Florida, dead on the beach. The only thing I haven't seen here at Del Nor Wiggins are sharks. I've not seen any sharks on the beach. I don't know why that is. I don't know. They did find a, a dead whale shark, which is a huge shark washed up on Sanibel. That's the only shark that I know of. I don't know if we have tiger sharks out here. And we have mako sharks and lemon sharks, nurse sharks, all kinds of sharks out here. Black tips. And I haven't heard of any of them washing up on the beach around here now or seen pictures of them. This is just my observation there, but I've not seen any sharks at Del Nor Wiggins. But I've seen everything else. Thank God I haven't seen a dolphin on the beach. Ugh. I don't know if I can handle that. There have been dolphins, dead dolphins spotted on the beaches as well as dead manatees floating in the canals. Oh. I don't think I could handle a dolphin. They're such beautiful, beautiful animals. 
Boy, the smell of the red tide's really strong right in this area here, up in area five. Really stinks. Got a co combination of things kind of rotting away here. We've got this seagrass that's just come up and washed up on the beach. That's decomposing and then the dead fish with it. It's definitely quite the aroma here, quite the aroma. I don't think it's something Calvin Klein would want to put in a bottle. There's another big drum fish, another big dead drum fish over there. Ugh. Just horrible. Horrible, horrible little puffer fish. We've seen a lot of little dead puffer fishes. All kinds of crabs, dead crabs, dead eels, horseshoe crabs. There's a dead horseshoe crab. This red algae has not been selective in what it kills. I guess the big question <laughs> is <coughs> what's going to come floating up on the beach next? This red tide's going to be hanging around. Ugh. What are we going to see next? Just praying every day that this red tide goes away. Eventually it will. Eventually it will. But in the meantime, it's terrible. Not only is it devastating to the marine life, but it's also killing our tourism, people's livelihoods. All these people have businesses along the beach. The kayak rentals, the jet ski rentals, the bars, the restaurants up on Fort Myers Beach, the hotels. It's killing those people. Well, no sign of Roy this morning. Sure, he's fine, but I am guessing he's just had enough of the smell out here. As much as he loves the beach, wow, it's pretty hard to keep our friend Roy away. And him and I have been out here and during some pretty bad times. Big fish kills from red tide when the beach was literally lined, covered with dead fish. Roy and I were out here. We've been out here in tropical storms, blinding rainstorms. It is hard to keep Roy away from the beach, but if he's not out here because of this stench out here, I don't blame him. I have seen two people out here at the beach this morning. One was a park ranger. Actually, I saw three. We saw one person when I first started my beach walk. She came out and she was just checking the beach out early this morning. And the other person I saw was actually out here doing some shelling. 
Other than this, that, this beach is empty. As far down as you can look. I don't see anybody on this beach. Let's see if we can zoom in a little. Look at that. That's our mile long beach here at Del Norwegan's empty. Imagine that. Who wants to be out here with this stink? Pretty sad, huh? Pretty, pretty sad sight. An empty beach in Florida. Wow. Where are all the people? This is looking from Area 5 Beach up in North Naples, Florida, Del Norwegian's Pass State Park, looking south. We don't see anybody on the beach today. Look at that, soak in that image. When have you seen that? When's the last time you've seen our beaches empty like this? Hmm. Wow. I've only seen a few boats out in the Gulf. We've seen some horrible, horrible videos and photos coming in from boats. It looks like little islands out in the Gulf, the dead fish. There's so many of them, they look like an island. I hear a boat. I can hear a boat out there. There's one way out there. You know, on another note though, this morning we did find some interesting seashells out here on the beach. Found some nice shells. It wasn't all dead fish. <laughs> but I'm gonna cut over to this little sandbar here that's just starting to pop up here as the tide goes out. Yeah, I'm gonna walk through the water, folks. Walking through this toxic water. See if there's anything of interest out here. A lot of times these sandbars are where we find some neat shells. A lot of times some neat sea life. I'm not seeing really anything this morning. A couple days ago we found a really cool live air whelk shell out here. Mostly rocks out here right now, mostly stones. These are all brought up by the dredging up at Wiggins Pass. Not really much of anything out here this morning, but it never hurts to come out and look. That's area four right there where Roy is usually 
waiting for me with a song or his harmonica. Not this morning. That's where we came from. That's where we saw that dead loggerhead sea turtle just around the corner up there at Wiggins Pass. <coughs> Getting some, some of that red tide, some of that red algae. You can smell it here. Right here, right in this little, this little patch of water here. It's pretty clear right here. That's about it. It's the only clear water I've seen around here. It's right up where Roy would normally be sitting. I wonder what that's about. More dead sea life. Horseshoe crabs, one there, one there. Dead catfish next to the horseshoe crab. Dead puffer fish up here. Uh, another dead little puffer down there. Well, there's hope. There's always hope. The red tide has to go away, please. It can't last forever, can it? Ugh. Well, still holding a 59 loggerhead sea turtle nest on the beach here. I think that's gonna probably be it for this season. There's a little dead puffer fish all puffed up over here. Upside down on its back, a little dead puffer fish. We do have a lot of our local shore birds sitting out here on the sandbar. That's always a great sign to see to see some life. It's always good to see some life out here. I miss all these dead fish. Ugh. Again, we did find some great seashells this morning. Found some nice looking shells. I definitely want to probably go back and watch the replay of this beach walk video. You can skip through parts. I'll post a higher quality copy of it on YouTube and share the link on Facebook later. You can watch that. It's a little baby horseshoe crab over here. A little baby one. Little dead baby horseshoe crab. Couple, see if I can reach in my pocket, maybe and find a shell or two that we found this morning. Found a couple Murex shells. See if I can find one of them. There's one of the Murex shells we found. Found two nice little Murex shells this morning. The lace Murex. What else I got in, do I got in that pocket? Nice little worm shell. Those, I always find those interesting, the worm shells. What else? It's hard reaching in my pocket and pulling something out. And I, what's this? Oh, 
Found a couple little moon shells with got a couple holes in them. I saved these because uh, they might be they're perfect for putting on a little necklace, a little chain. Found several of those this morning. Found a good size one with a hole in it. Look at that. That's a good size one there. That'd make a nice, nice little necklace there. We did find we did find some meat shells this morning. It wasn't all gloom and doom. Although it really really hurts to see that to really hurt to see that dead sea turtle up there. Oh. Poof. You can see the beach is still littered with fish. You can see all the dead fish up here. And it gets worse. At Del Norwegians, it seems to get worse as you go down south. But then on a brighter note, you know, we got all our little shorebirds hanging out out here. Hanging out on the sandbar. Royal terns and seagulls. See them all out there? So cool. These are royal terns over here. Beautiful birds. And as I pan over to the right, mostly gulls, mostly seagulls over here on the right. It's nice to see some life out here. Oh, I'm back. Sorry about that. I was just shooting a little video of the birds. Heading back to where we started down in Area 1 this morning. I'm gonna cut through the water here. There's another moon shell down there. Oh, part of a part of a moon shell. I just saw the eye sticking up looking at me. Gonna cut across the water here. It's filled with the red algae. You just gotta make sure you do come out and do a little wading, do shelling, which nobody really wants to do, that you rinse off really well, shower well, if you're out in the water with red tide. There's really no reason to come out here swimming, but I'm just saying if you do happen to be out in the water for some reason, just make sure you shower off. Many of you who follow along on my morning beach walks, which by the way, I don't do every morning. I try to get out here three times a week. So it just depends on my schedule. But many of you have remember we've had a, a barge 
sitting off shore here. They were dredging and they had this barge pumping the sand from the dredging operation down to our beaches here in area four. As we look around, that barge is gone. That whole dredging operation packed up on last Tuesday and finally headed out of here. So no more barges off our shoreline or washed up on the beach. One of the barges washed up on the beach a week ago. That was quite a sight. Just looking, looking at this beautiful view. Huh. It's hard to imagine what's going on out in the water, isn't it? Isn't that gorgeous, that beautiful blue sky? It's so hard to believe the terrible things that are happening in our waters. I'm sure many of you have realized that I've kind of given up on responding to comments. The comments have been overwhelming during the live feeds. I do encourage people to comment and be interactive with each other. You know, there's a lot of false information getting spread around out here. and I count on my core followers here on Southwest Florida Television, all those folks that have been here since the beginning, to speak up and hold your ground. If you know somebody's spreading false information, challenge them. And I did say this earlier. If you do comment and you're making a bold statement about what you think causes the blue-green algae, the red algae, whatever it might be, whatever you're commenting on and making a statement, please try to back it up with some links so other people can be educated too. Share your knowledge, please share links. Links are important. People need to be educated. Still, still, still putting up with the dead fish. Nothing has really changed since my last beach walk on Tuesday. Still stinks out here and we still got the dead fish. All types of dead fish attacks. I see another soul, one other soul down there to the south, to the north of me, walking on the beach. That's the third person I've seen out here besides our park rangers. Actually, I do see some people down in area one now. Mostly onlookers, tourists that have sadly spent lots of money to come to Southwest Florida and enjoy our beaches and they just come to find this devastation. Oh boy, <coughs> getting another whiff of that stench of the red tide. Ugh. It's horrible at times. Whew. It's a combination of the red tide, the rotting fish, the rotting seagrass. It's just awful. Awful, awful. red tide such just so beautiful here look at that sky so beautiful and yet ugh, horrible
right in this little area, the water doesn't look too bad. It's still pretty cloudy. Not near as bad as it is in other parts of the beach here at Del Mar Wiggins. This is the very south end of Area 4. You can actually see the bottom. Wow. You get some sunlight. Amazing. Quite a lot of new sandbars to walk on here. I'm really looking forward to checking out all these new sandbars. You can see them out here just starting to surface here as the tide goes out. As soon as this water clears up, there's usually some really fun things to find out there. One thing that I encourage everyone to do is introduce yourself. Let us know where you're watching from. Introduce yourself to the group. I know we get people watching from all, over, all around the world. It's absolutely amazing. And it will get better. We'll be back to those beautiful morning beach walks soon. Shelling, dolphin sightings, manatee sightings talking to the fishermen. Those beach walks, those mornings will be back. Fear not. This red tide isn't gonna last forever. <coughs> but boy, does it stink. <laughs> Just took a little walk out onto the sandbar. Take a look back up the beach. snap off a quick photo bear with me this is looking back at area 4 beach right here this is all area 4 beach going up here if you look closely you might be able to see a couple of sea turtle nests there a pan look to the south here There are a few people out here. They're down in Area 1. Area 1 is the first parking lot when you come into the beach past what have to pay at the front gate. Most of you watching know that nobody pays me to come out here doing these beach walks. I enjoy coming out here. I'm trying to educate people. What little bit I do know about things that are going on, I try to share that. But this is more about just providing a platform for people to get together on and share their thoughts make new friendships, ask questions about the real estate down here. I don't care. <laughs> There's a lot of great friendships that have been made through these beach walks. It's amazing. We're kind of like a little family, a little beach community here on Southwest Florida Television, which is just the name of my Facebook page here. We're not really a TV station. But like I said, nobody pays me to do this. And I hope you're learning something. I hope you enjoy it. Even though it hasn't been very pleasant for the past week or so. We have had some beautiful mornings and fun times together. And if you want to make a little contribution, it's always appreciated. You can find my PayPal account information in the description of this post a little bit later. Those of you that have made a little 
contribution. Thank you so much. Every little bit helps. I'm not talking about tons of dollars. <laughs> Every little bit helps. Pays the phone bill, which is very important. Got to keep the phone going here. Or we wouldn't be doing these beach walks. And I do put a lot of time into it. It's not just walking on the beach. There's a lot more behind the scenes going on. And I hope you enjoy it. Hope you appreciate it. I'm gonna give you one more look down the beach. I'm gonna pan around and look up the beach before signing off. We're in Area 2 right now, the north end of Area 2 Beach. You can see several of our loggerhead sea turtle nests. Nest number 39 over there. Over here, nest number 53. These are the same sea turtles making these nests as the one we saw dead this morning up in at Wiggins Pass at the north end of the park. Another decomposing loggerhead sea turtle rotting on the beach, died from red tide. Sad sight to see those animals dead like that. But we do have 59 nests on the beach. That's good news. That is a record number of sea turtle nests at Del Nor Wiggins Pass. 59 sea turtle nests. Maybe we'll get a few late stragglers. The more the merrier. Of course, we worry about those little hatchlings coming out into the world and having to deal with this red tide. Hopefully they'll survive. No guarantees. God bless them. Well, again, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like and follow button if you haven't done so already. Take the time to check out all of my photos and videos. If you find something you like, hit the like button, but please hit the share button. I want to see this community continue to grow. Over 21,000 likes now, over 22,000 followers. I want to hit 30,000 by the end of this year. Let's see if we can hit the 30,000 mark before 2019. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful Thursday, wherever you might be watching from. Whatever time of the day it is, night, morning, whatever. For Southwest Florida Television, I'm Rob Stan. God bless.